Hi and welcome to this third video of the module. In this video we will introduce RDFS, an extension of RDS which will allow us to produce a more complete description of the data we are consuming and generating. As we did with RDF, we will introduce the core concepts, its realization and the different capabilities that it offers, which as we will see are far more complex and complete in this case. RDFS or RDF schema is an extension of RDF. It allows to describe the classes and properties to be used in our dataset, generating a semantic model for it. It also introduces the possibility of adding some restriction to our data model. In this example, we see an overall picture of the RDF and RDFS family. Here in green, we have the elements belonging to RDFS, most of which we introduced in the previous video. Now in blue, we have highlighted the elements introduced by RDFS. As we see, we have several uh, classes and properties, including, for example, subclass, which will allow us to define the hierarchical taxonomy of classes in our model. We also have uh, the domain and range properties. These properties define which are the origin and target values of a property. We will explain this in the coming example. Here we see a vocabulary defining information about university professors. By means of the RDF subclass property, we have a hierarchy of classes, from the most general term of a person to uh, the different levels of professor that can be found in a university. All these elements are defined as RDF classes by means of the RDF type property. We can also define individuals belonging to these classes, that is, our data, defining, defined according to our model. Here we see how Oscar is an instance of an associate professor, Raul is an instance of an interim associate professor, and Asun is a full professor. As well, with RDFS, we introduce more detailed description of the properties. We see here how has name, has web page, and uh, has colleague are stated as RDF properties. As well, we are defining their domain and range. For example, for the uh, has name property, the domain is person and the range is a literal. This means that this property can be applied to person, which will be uh, the subject of the triple, and the value, that is the object, the object of the triple, must be a literal. The has colleague property has the same range and domain in this case, which is a person, meaning that, that it delays a resource representing a person belonging to a class person to another one belonging to the same class. With RDFS, we introduce a set of special properties that allow to document uh, and describe our resources. For example, we can annotate the resource Raul, which we have introduced before, with textual information using, for example, RDFS label. With this property, we can assign informative, informative textual labels in different formats and languages. With RDFS comment, we can introduce and annotate more elaborated information. This is uh, really useful when documenting our dataset, when generating documentation of our dataset. With RDFS see also, we can point to another resource which may add more information about the resource we are describing. Finally, with uh, RDF is defined by, we can um, introduce or we can point to the RDF vocabulary describing the resource we are uh, um, using as the subject here, Raul. As uh, RDFS is based on RDF, it supports several syntaxes, as in the case of RDF, when codifying it. We see here the RDF model, the RDFS model, sorry, and the data we have used in the previous examples. We can codify this model using, the, for example, the XML syntax. As we see here, we have the code for the properties and the related domain and range uh, values. For example, we have has college with the range and domain uh, person in, the same, uh, in this case. As well, we see here the classes um, for the different types, types of professors. And as you may notice, we are using prefixes in the XML codification. We are shortening the names. We are not using the full URIs. 
We see here how they state uh, the subclass property, uh, as we introduced before, implementing this way the class hierarchy or taxonomy. We can also use the turtle syntax, which is more compact and clear when reading the document. When we use A in triples, it is a way of saying RDF type, it's the short form of RDF type. Remember that even though these syntaxes look really different and the order of the triples may vary, the content is always the same and the RDF graphs should be considered equal. RDFS introduces a more elaborated and complex set of inference rules, uh, allowing us to infer more information from our triples. We have rules from inheritance or uh, type inference, for example. In this case, RDFS3 uh, rule states that if a property A has a range X and there is a triple UAV, then V must be of type X. Rule RDFS11 states that if U is a subclass of B and B is a subclass of X, then U must be a subclass of X. That is, the RDFS subclass property is a transitive one. The X3 uh, and X4 rules imply that a subproperty inherits the domain and range of its parent property. In this case, for example, if U has an RDFS domain V and WB is a subproperty of U, then uh, WB has an RDF domain V. Even though RDFS is more expressive than just RDF, it still has some limitations. In general, RDFS is uh, too weak to describe resources when we want to do it in sufficient detail, in enough detail. We can localize the range and domain of a property. We can say things, for example, such as that the range has child in person, uh, in person when applied to persons and elephant when applied to elephants. We can introduce uh, existence or cardinality constraint, that is, we can say that all instances of a person have uh, a mother that is also a person, in this case, or that a person have exactly two parents. We cannot introduce uh, Boolean operators, we cannot introduce AND, OR, or negation. There is no way as well in this case in RDFS to introduce uh, or to state that a property is transitive, inverse, or symmetrical. We can say that its part of is transitive or that has part is the inverse of its part of. Finally, um, it is difficult to provide reasoning outside the uh, built-in semantics of RDFS. There, is, there are no native reasoners uh, for non-standard semantics, uh, but we can introduce some reasoning um, via a first of the logic uh, axiomatization of our models. There are a wide range of tools for working with both RDF and RDFS, and many of them also support some other languages that we will introduce in the following models. You can access them uh, in these links. With this, we conclude this second model. We have introduced RDF and RDFS, which, as you will see in the rest of the core, are fundamental for the development of uh, an understanding of the semantic web and the generation of linked data.